Just because a car is fashionable doesn't mean it can't also be practical too. For proof of that, Citroen brings us this C3 Aircross. This complete and highly personalisable package is their idea of what a little SUV should be. What if you could have the style and adventurous feel of a small SUV combined with the interior space and flexibility of a small MPV people carrier? Well, it's a combination of virtues that many brands have promised, but which possibly this car actually delivers, the Citroen C3 Aircross. Now, the French like practical, rational cars, which is why brands from this nation were first to popularise the MPV and amongst the last to embrace the contradictory charms of the modern, affordable family SUV. Why, they ask quite reasonably, would you want to take a super mini or a family hatchback and in pursuit of some mythical lifestyle orientation, make it heavier, clunkier, less efficient and less practical? What, though, if those downsides could be minimized Minimized, and the SUV in question could offer all the interior versatility that you used to need one of those small super mini MPVs if you required it in a really compact little car. Well, that is the thinking behind this C3 Aircross. This, we're told, is a car full of technical innovation. Well, just like the Citroens of old then, those old DS, GS and CX models of the 60s and 70s with their groundbreaking drive systems and their quirky suspension setups. Well, not quite. The technical innovations here are largely items of rather less substance. 85 different exterior paint combinations, brightly coloured air vents, a class leadingly large sunroof, wireless phone charging and modular rear seats that recline and slide. That's what the modern SUV crowd wants and Citroen feels compelled to play to it. If you know anything about the company's current model range, you can probably tell at a glance where the C3 Aircross fits in. It's a smaller brother to the company's C5 Aircross model, but where that family hatchback-based contender targets Kia Sportage, Peugeot 3008 and Qashqai class cars in the C-segment part of the SUV market, this smaller design has its sights set on super mini-based rivals like Nissan's Duke and Renault's Capture. Now you might, as we initially did, make the mistake of assuming that uh, this contender is little more than a dressed up C3 Super Mini in a pair of hiking boots, but actually there's a lot more to it than that. Not least the fact that this Aircross variant sits on a wheelbase that's 60 millimeters longer than a standard C3, which makes it significantly more spacious inside. So in short, it's a small SUV with big ideas. Time to put it to the test. It won't bother potential buyers one jot that the C3 Aircross is about as comfortable in the rough stuff as your average upper-class Parisian would be in a tent. Um, having heard that, you won't be remotely surprised to learn that four-wheel drive isn't offered, and it never will be, although there is a more sensible alternative to all-wheel traction, and we'll get to that in a minute. To start with, though, let's focus on this car's core values. Uh, they're designed to suit the school run and the commuter-orientated existence that it will actually lead. Um, one that'll be very different from the surf shack life promised by the pretty pictures in the brochure. The issues you'll face as a C3 Aircross owner will of course be less about adventure and more about avoiding misadventure, hence a suite of up to 12 different driver assistance systems to keep you safe, and a 50mm increase in ride height over an ordinary C3 Super Mini so as to better cruise across the potholes and tarmac tears of everyday urban life. Um, it's on these kinds of roads that you'll appreciate a very Citroen-esque attribute that this car's been favoured with, and that's a very decent quality of ride. Um, it's hardly magic carpet-like, but by the mediocre standards prevalent in the small crossover class, uh, the damping balance that's been chosen here is very good indeed. Speed humps and really deep holes can occasionally catch it out, uh, but over most surfaces uh, the ride feels very smooth. Surprisingly so really, because there's nothing at all advanced about this car's Oldtech PF1 PSA Group platform and conventional suspension package. 
True, the setup chosen isn't as soft and absorbent as it would be in an ordinary C3, but that's a good thing in our book because the extra firmness cuts down on the body roll that that car tends to be somewhat afflicted with at speed through the corners. As with any SUV, you will still get plenty of pitching about if you start to really push on through the bends, but at least here there's plenty of grip and it's always easy to place the nose of the car exactly where you want it to be. Uh, the steering really helps in that regard. Uh, the power assistance being a bit more progressive in its input than it is in that conventional C3 where it's basically just light all the time. Having said all that, the Aircross is, like its Super Mini stablemate, at its happiest in town. And that's not only because of the ride quality, but also thanks to a light, agile feel that's complemented by a tight 10.8 metre turning circle. Uh, things aren't quite so good out on the highway, where there is a fair bit of wind and road noise. Uh, and in addition, uh, unless you spring for the priciest petrol or diesel engines, you don't get a tall six gear ratio fitted to the manual gearbox. As a result, you'll be saddled with a slightly buzzy engine note that after a while can get rather wearing at or around the legal limit. Having mentioned engines, we should tell you a bit more about them. Uh, basically, there are two, a 1.2 litre PureTech petrol unit and a 1.6 litre Blue HDI diesel, but there's a variety of flavours to choose from in each case. Our preference would be for the PureTech power plant, although not in its entry level 82 bhp guys. That's a unit that really struggles to move this car along with any kind of real eagerness at all. And that's something illustrated by that base variant's uh, unremarkable performance figures. Rest to 62 miles an hour in uh, 15.9 seconds, en route to a maximum of 103 mph. Unfortunately, the same engine can be had in a far zippier 110 bhp and 130 bhp turbocharged format. Um, the 110 bhp variant is the one that you'll need if you want the option of Citroen's EAT6 automatic transmission. Uh, stick with the stick shift though uh, in that mid-range petrol unit and once you've adjusted to the gearbox's annoyingly long throw and its rather vague feel, uh, the 62 miles an hour sprint should be possible in 11.3 seconds on the way to 115 miles an hour which is probably as fast as you'll want to go in a car of this kind. For the 130 30 bhp variant, that's what we got here, uh, the figures are 10.4 seconds and 124 miles now. The Blue HDI diesel options will be a less popular choice and uh, they come only in manual form. Uh, the choice is between a 5 speed 100 bhp variant uh, which makes 62 miles an hour in 12.8 seconds en route to 109 miles an hour or a 6 speed 120 bhp model which improves those figures to 10.7 seconds and 114 miles an hour. Both units can be a bit boomy under hard acceleration uh, but useful amounts of torque uh, compensate for that. To to illustrate that point, even the feebler of the two Blue HDI engines has more than double the pulling power of the entry level PureTech petrol variant. So finally, let's finish by briefing you on the feature that we referenced at the beginning, the optional grip control package. Now this is a kind of um, anti-scrabble traction system for the front wheels. Uh, it'll keep you going on slippery surfaces without the need for the weight and the complexity of a full-blown 4x4 setup. So it works by uh, tweaking the ESP stability control system and via a rotary dial down here on the dash provides specific selectable modes for snow and sand, uh, plus an all-terrain setting for mud and a standard normal mode for low-grip tarmac. As part of the grip control option, you also get grippier all-season tyres and a hill descent assist feature which can ease the car down slippery slopes. It's all most buyers will really ever need. This car looks like it's up for a bit of fun, doesn't it? It's styling all jaunty bulges, contrasting colours and Tonka toy-like looks. Shy and retiring folk won't see the point, but the fashionistas should love it. Now, size-wise, the C3 Aircross is placed halfway between the Super Mini and the family hatch segments, and that's an SUV sweet spot that was once occupied by Citroen C4 Cactus before that car was moved a little more into the mainstream. If you thought the cactus was visually extrovert, uh, you might need a cup of hot sweet tea after coming face to face with the front end of this little aircross model. It might not be exactly pretty, but 
Certainly striking with a bluff, unapologetic nose that flows into a short, raised, muscular bonnet. Uh, one characteristic styling cue is the usual Citroen two-tier lighting signature. These top units housing the LED daytime running lights. Uh, the lower ones are for the headlamps and they come complete with coloured surrounds and they also incorporate space for the fog lamps. A lower down and aluminium effect uh, bumper protector aims to underscore this car's SUV credentials. From the side, two things stand out. Firstly, you appreciate the way that the larger 16 or 17 inch wheels and the extra 50 mils of ground clearance make this model stand so much taller than its C3 Super Mini Stablemate. But just as quickly, your eye is also drawn to the signature profile styling flourish. This Venetian blind effect rear quarter light. It's made from polycarbonate and layered with coloured film. Now this is just one of the areas that you can colour personalise. The others, as you can see, being the door mirrors and, more unusually, the roof rails. Now most buyers in this segment seem to want a uh, contrasting colour roof, so in top spec form, this Citroen provides three options for that too. Uh, in some ways though, equally interesting is what's missing, the distinctive side air bumps that you get on an ordinary C3. Now Citroen doesn't think that they suit models in the crossover class. The back end is, if anything, an even more outspoken piece of uh, pavement theatre with 3D rear lamp clusters and the in-your-face nature of this chunky rear bumper with its incorporated lower skid plate. Uh, the tailgate's topped off by a neat roof spoiler and a beasting style aerial, while a two-tone C3 Aircross badge and gloss black Citroen chevrons aim to complete the effect. As usual, what's more important is the stuff you can't see. In this case, the PF1 platform this car shares with the Vauxhall Crossland X, a rival that rolls down the same production line as this Citroen does in Zaragoza, Spain. Now, in truth, it is a rather old chassis, the origins of which can be traced back to a turn of the century Peugeot 206, but a string of improvements over the years have kept it reasonably up to date. Time to take a seat inside. Now the door shuts the surprisingly solid thunk, which is a good start. And now, don't worry, you don't have to have the interior trimmed in this fashion. Our test car uh, features the optional urban red ambiance package that gives you these extrovertly bright red trimming highlights on the seats, on the air vents, and also on the steering wheel. Alternatively, you can have black or tan part leather finishes. Either way though, once you've uh, sampled any of these interior ambiance options, the standard gray interior trimming pack will seem very very restrained and possibly even stultifyingly dull. Perhaps that's a little unfair. After all, once you take a closer look, there are plenty of unique design touches to be found around a cabin that differentiates itself from that of a normal C3 by this wider, deeper, soft-touch fascia panel and quirky little upright air vents at either end of the dash. Plus, there are retro-style instrument dial graphics, a curiously stylized handbrake lever, and even an indented reverse air bump theme on the top of the doors. It all attempts to continue the cheery demeanor established before you got in. Now, to be honest, uh, we would have happily traded some of this feel-good frippery for a few established modern era Citroen features of a bit more substance. Um, for example, the neat fixed steering wheel center panel of the Mark 1 C4, or the clever Zenith windscreen used on the old Mark 2 C3 model that extended the glasswork uh, up above your head into the roof section and offered a wonderful view forward that was especially helpful when you were stopped under a traffic light. You don't get anything like that on Citroens in the company's current model range, and partly that's because the company thinks that genuinely innovative touches of fundamental design can be potentially divisive in the showroom. Uh, so fashionable touches that you can add or take away are a much safer bet with browsing buyers. And partly it's because the designers have had to budget in an allowance for the extra multimedia solutions that current buyers now want. And specifically, that's this center dash seven inch color touch 
touchscreen and it's standard on the two upper trim levels. As on other PSO Group models, it is there to uh, declutter the dashboard and also as on other PSO Group models, it goes too far by including ventilation controls and concealing them behind menus that can be awkward to instantly access when you're using the screen's other functions. Now these other functions include a DAB radio, the Bluetooth phone connection, the mirror screen with Apple CarPlay connectivity and the optional Citroen Connect navigation system. The seats are very comfortable and they're designed as part of the brand's advanced comfort program, which makes them wider and a bit more cushioned than is normal for a car of this price. And that's something that you're really going to appreciate on longer trips. It's a pity though that these chairs can't feature adjustable lumbar support. Height adjustment means uh, finding a perfect driving position is straightforward and that's aided by reach and rake adjustability for the steering wheel. Uh, through that you will view two analogue dials separated by a digital speedo that sits above a trip computer. As for all round visibility, well it isn't great over your shoulder thanks to the shallow rear screen and those thick rear C pillars which might be a bit of an issue because you have to stretch to the very top of the range to get rear parking sensors as standard. And whilst we're griping, let's also moan about the fact that, as usual on PSA Group products, half the glove box capacity is eaten up by the fuse box. Right, time to take a seat in the rear. Now this Aircross model's 160 millimeter length increase over a standard C3 obviously helps things here. Uh, it's also a little longer and taller than competitors like Seat Sirona and Renault's Capture, and it's significantly larger than rival Nissan Duke, all of which ought to benefit rear seat occupants. And it does. Not many B-segment SUV buyers regularly carry adults in the rear, but for those that do, it's hard to think of many better choices than this Citroen in this class. As in any compact car, three people will feel squashed, but there's plenty of room for two tall adults to sit behind a couple of equally lanky folk up front. Uh, the soft front seat backs with their colour-themed pockets obviously help here. Not so good is the reduction in head height, though, that you'll get if you specify this large opening panoramic glass roof. If you can live with that, this feature gives you a glazed area of nearly one metre in length, which really lightens the cabin when you attract the integrated electric blind. Go for a top flare variant or specify the optional family pack and you get the flexibility of this sliding rear bench that features a 60-40 split and moves back and forth over a 150mm range. It's a feature we think you really have to have with this car. Uh, we like the design of the backrest too. It can be positioned at two different angles and the centre part can be folded down to reveal a couple of cup holders. Another cup holder is accessible just above the notably low centre transmission tunnel, plus there's a 12 volt socket, uh, neat roof mounted reading lights, ice fix charge seat fastenings and reasonably sized door bins too. Last but not least, let's take a look in the boot. Raise the rear hatch uh, when the Back seat is set for maximum legroom and there's a 410 litre capacity on offer. That's 110 litres more than you get in an ordinary C3 and also more than you'd find in most supposedly larger Golf family hatchbacks. Uh, to give you some SUV B-segment class perspective on that, uh, a similarly configured Renault Capture would give you 377 litres, while a Nissan Duke would give you just 354 litres. Uh, position the seat to completely prioritise luggage space though and that's much more room can be freed up, up to 520 litres of room, in fact, if you're prepared to really compromise rear seat legroom. To help you make good use of the space on offer, there's this useful adjustable height boot floor panel. Now, as with most setups of this type, the idea is that you can reposition it at a lower level if you have taller things to carry, say a garden centre plant, for example. If it's in its normal higher position, though, uh, it'll usefully conceal a lower space that could be used to shield more valuable items from prying eyes. And when it's not in use, uh, you can slot it in in front of the rear seat back. Now this has a uh, split central section so that long items like skis can be pushed through without disturbing rear seat occupants. And beneath the lower boot floor, there's a further space to carry the space saver spare wheel that comes as standard, providing you avoid entry level trim.
Push forward the 6040 split folding rear seat and you'll reveal a flat loading floor or the boot panel in place with as much as 1,289 litres of total fresh air, if you load up to the roof that is. A uh, few competitors can better that. Plus, if you go for the optional family pack we mentioned earlier, you get a fold flat front passenger seat that enables items of up uh, 2.4 metres in length to be accommodated. That means really long or bulky items can fit in with deceptive ease. Uh, a mountain bike, for example. Time to see what the C3 Aircross costs and what you get for the money. Now the bottom line here is that this is one of the more affordable small SUVs you could choose, although that doesn't mean it's inexpensive. The entry level touch spec normally aspirated 82 bhp petrol variant costs from around 14,000 pounds but citroen expects hardly anyone to buy that with sales instead likely to be centered around turbo petrol or diesel engines in mid-range field trim or this top flare spec now for something like that you're looking at needing a budget starting from around 16,500 pounds whatever your model preference expect your dealer to be able to offer particularly appealing monthly finance rates which is perhaps a safer way into ownership because it will insulate you from uncertain depreciation. And that's a factor that's always difficult to judge with a fashion-led product of this sort. Want a little more detail on engines? Well, let's give you that. Now, base touch trim is offered only with that base petrol unit, uh, which is a slow seller for a reason. Trade up to a plusher feel or flare variant and you get the full range of power plants though. With petrol people given the opportunity to find a 1100 pound premium over the base unit to get themselves the PureTech 110 petrol turbo derivative that we would recommend. Now that particular engine is the only one in the range that's available with automatic transmission and that's an EAT6 self-shifter that's offered a £1,200 premium over the manual. Here, though, we've been trying the top PureTech 130 derivative, which costs £400 more than the 110, and that's a premium that gets you a six-speed for the manual gearbox as well as the extra power. Now, if you want a diesel, you'll need a budget starting from around £17,500, and that will get you the least expensive Blue HDI 100 variant. A further £700 is necessary to get the Pokia Blue HDI 120 model, which adds a stop and start system and a six speed manual gearbox. Now, if you're wondering how much extra it costs to trade up from Citroen's ordinary C3 Super Mini into this SUV style C3 Aircross model, well, it's difficult to give you a definitive answer on that because the two cars have slightly different engine lineups. The Aircross ignores the feeblest petrol and diesel units that you'll find in an ordinary C3. Where engine and spec levels are shared, the price difference between the two designs varies widely. Uh, at the bottom of the range, with a base touch spec 82 bhp petrol variant, uh, it is quite a lot, around £1,700. If you're looking at the volume PureTech 110 petrol turbo engine with top flare trim, it'll cost you £1,100 more to move from a C3 to a C3 Aircross. And with a base Blue HDI 100 diesel in mid-range field spec, the difference between the two designs is only around £300, so you see what we mean, it's difficult to judge. Now what we can do a little more accurately is give you a perspective on the value proposition that Citroen's pricing represents against similar models from other brands in the growing SUV B segment for super mini based designs. Uh, the rivals that we ought to start with are the two small SUVs from PSO Group partner brands that share their platforms and much of their engineering with this car. Uh, so Vauxhall's Cross and X and Peugeot's 2008. Now in rough terms expect this C3 aircraft to undercut comparable Cross and X models by around 15 to 1700 pounds or more than that if you're looking at the entry level petrol engine with base trim. And this Citroen is far cheaper than a Peugeot 2008. Uh, it promises a saving of around 1300 pounds if you're looking at a diesel and that potential saving rises to somewhere in the 2000 to 2500 pound bracket if you're looking at a PureTech uh, turbo petrol model like this one. 
So this Aircross easily wins the value plaudits when it comes to PSA group models, but can it stand out as easily against other contenders in the segment? Well, let's start with the two most successful class players, Nissan's Duke and Renault's Capture. Now, the Nissan can undercut this C3 Aircross by a few hundred pounds in diesel form, but it's typically 600 to 1,000 pounds pricier in petrol guys. And either way, it's significantly smaller than this Citroen inside. The Renault gets closer to this Aircross model's level of interior space, but it can't match it, and it's quite a few hundred pounds pricier, whichever derivative you care to look at. As for other rivals in the segment, well, it's hard to find any volume brand player in the class that can put a B-segment SUV on your driveway for around £14,000, a Citroen can with the entry-level touch-spec version of this C3 Aircross. If though, like the majority of potential buyers, you limit your comparisons to the most popular mid- and high-spec turbo petrol and diesel versions of this car, well, you'll find it's priced very comparably to some sector competitors, but way more affordably than others. Uh, judged on this basis, a rival Hyundai Kona or Fiat 500X would cost about the same as this Aircross, uh, while a Seat Arona, a Kia Stonic or a Ford Ecosport would cost only a few hundred pounds more. If you cast your net uh, a bit wider in the segment though, you'll find that most versions of Suzuki's Vitara and Mitsubishi's ASX will cost you at least around 1,500 pounds more than this Citroen. And also much more expensive, uh, to the tune of two to three thousand pounds, are comparable versions of potential rivals like Vauxhall's Mokka X, Jeep's Renegade and Mazda's CX-3. You can, of course, pay less for a car in this class, but then you'll get less too. A Sangyong Tivoli could save you uh, around a thousand pounds in petrol guys and over two and a half thousand as a diesel. But much of that would be eroded over the duration of your ownership period by higher running costs and lower residuals. Now, you could even theoretically get yourself a comparable car of this kind in the really affordable 11 to 13,000 pound bracket if you went for a Suzuki Ignis, that's too small for family use, or a Dacia Duster, that's a much clunkier proposition for urban driving. But I mean, let's get to the bottom line here, which is that whatever you pitch against it, the value proposition of this C3 Aircross ends up looking strong. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is a C3 Aircross that you really want, well, then you're going to need to know just how generous Citroen has been with a standard specification. So, let's take a look at that now. Now, even entry-level touch spec gets you features like air conditioning, roof rails, Bluetooth phone connectivity, a four-speaker DAB stereo system with USB and aux in connections, uh, cruise control with a speed limiter, a height adjustable driver's seat, an alarm, auto headlamps, and a decent range of camera-driven safety features that we'll cover off in a minute. It would be a pity, though, to buy a C3 Aircross and not have access to the personalization features that make this car so unique. Now, Citroen's marketing this model as being available with a choice of eight body colors, three roof shades, and four different cabin color packs. But actually, hardly any of that choice will be available to you if you limit yourself to base touch trim. Uh, even with mid-range feel spec, you don't get the chance to have a contrast colored roof, but otherwise, most of what you'd ideally want is either standard or optional. So with a feel variant, uh, the key additional features that buyers will immediately notice are the aluminium bumper protectors that you get front and rear and the 7-inch center dash infotainment touchscreen that you get inside. That monitor is your access point for the six-speaker DAB stereo system and the mirror screen feature that via Apple CarPlay allows you to duplicate the functionality of your smartphone handset onto the facial monitor. Uh, in addition, at this level, the kit list runs to LED daytime running lights, 16-inch matrix alloy wheels, uh, dark-tinted rear windows, front fog lights, powered heated mirrors, uh, a leather steering wheel and a space saver spare wheel. Now that only leaves top of the range flare trim, which is what we have here. Now as you can see, with this variant, you get all the color personalization options thrown in as part of the price. And that includes the bitone uh, contrasting colored roof that so many buyers in this segment want. And that's available in black, orange, or as in this case, white. Also thrown in is the style pack that would cost 250 pounds extra on a mid-range fear model, and which allows you to have the door mirrors, uh, the roof 
frails and the Venetian blind effect rear quarter light uh, coloured in either white, silver or as in this case, orange. Another crucial standard inclusion at this level that will cost you more on a lesser feel variant is the sliding rear bench that allows you to prioritise either luggage space or rear seat legroom. Uh, other standard flare features include larger 17-inch diamond-cut forever alloy wheels, climate control, uh, auto wipers, rear electric windows, keyless entry, rear parking sensors and satellite navigation. Plus, there's also the Citroen Connect box emergency and assistance system. That'll automatically alert the emergency services if you're involved in an accident. On to options. Now, if you're graduating into this car after familiarization with an ordinary C3 Super Mini, then you might be surprised to find that there are a couple of elements that are really characteristic to that car that you can't have on this one. Uh, the side-mounted air bump panels that also marked out Citroen's first contender in the compact SUV segment, the original C4 Cactus, are completely missing here. Uh, so is what is probably the ordinary C3 model's most topical feature, the connect cam package which gives you a GoPro style dash cam camera for fun pictures and traffic footage. You'd have thought that that little piece of technology would have been a perfect fit for this model. On to what you can have. Now, earlier on, we mentioned the choice of cabin packs that Citroen offers, and that's something that you have to pay extra for right across the range. Uh, you'll want to as well, because the standard grey cabin decor is pretty dour and out of character with the kind of car that this C3 Aircross is trying to be. Now, there are four different so-called ambiance interior options here, but we really wouldn't bother with the first of those, Metropolitan Grey, uh, where the only real advantage over the base package is a set of bright orange air vents. Better is the urban red ambiance package that we have here and that adds red seat stitching and fascia highlights plus the uh, leather-like dashboard covering. Now if you're happy to spend a bit more then the Hype Mistral package combines black leather, pattern cloth and satin chromed vents uh, while the Hype Colorado package gives you a tan coloured finish for the half leather seats and the two-tone steering wheel and dashboard. With that sorted to our satisfaction, uh, if we were specifying this C3 Aircross, uh, we'd then decide whether we wanted the two features that Citroen seems to be very proud of, the big optional panoramic glass roof and the grip control system that gives the front wheels extra traction in slippery conditions. Now, both those things have been fitted here. After that, uh, well, we'd then turn our attention to the various optional packs that the brand offers. Now, the most important of these is the family pack, and that will give your car that sliding rear bench if the chosen variant doesn't already have it. Plus, there'll be a fold-flat front passenger seat, a front armrest, and a package of extra camera-driven safety features that we'll cover off in a moment. Um, on a mid-range feel variant, you might also want to look at the city pack. Now, that will give you uh, rear parking sensors and power folding mirrors. And on a top-spec flare derivative like this one, well, you might want to look at the park assist pack, now that will give you a park assist self-parking system with a top vision reversing camera, front parking sensors and blind spot monitoring. What else? Uh, well, providing you avoid entry level trim, you can add in a tow bar and buyers of top flare variants can also specify a techno hi-fi pack that will give them a wireless phone charger, uh, a colour head-up display, a 3.5 inch colour screen on the instrument binnacle and a hi-fi radio with a subwoofer and an amplifier. Now, if you're going to stretch to a mid-range feel variant, you can give it something of a flare feel by adding in an extra cost automatic pack. Now, this would give you climate control, auto wipers and an electrochrome rear view mirror. I also highlight the fact that the top model's satellite navigation system is available as an option for feel variant buyers. And if with this variant you do go for that, then you'll get the Citroen Connect box emergency and assistance system that I mentioned earlier. Now that will be thrown in as part of the deal. 
On to safety. Uh, laudably, the French brand has included three elements of technology that you wouldn't expect to find as standard on a car of this price. The first of these, the lane departure warning system, alerts you if at speed the car starts wandering over lane delineating lines. Uh, then there's a coffee break alert feature that reminds you to take a break on long journeys, say after two hours at average speeds of over 40 miles an hour. Uh, now, we also like the standard speed recognition and speed warning feature. And this will uh, picture speed signs as you pass and then display them on the dash. Uh, the recorded figures can then easily be set into the standard cruise control speed limiter, meaning that, in theory at least, you need never be zapped by a speed camera ever again. Otherwise, the standard safety tally is pretty much as you would expect it to be on a modern small SUV. So every C3 Aircross comes with twin front side and curtain airbags, Isofix charge seat mounts and hill start assist that uh, stops your car from rolling backwards as you pull away on inclines. Plus, as we said before, with this Flare model's optional park assist pack, you get blind spot monitoring. And this is a system that's there to alert you if at speed you're about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle. If you want more, you'll have to specify the optional family pack we mentioned earlier. So as well as the seat orientated features, this gives you a package of camera driven safety elements that include uh, Citroen's autonomous braking system. The brand calls this active safety brake. This is one of those autonomous braking setups that scans the road ahead as you drive for potential collision hazards. If one's detected, then you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond or perhaps you aren't able to, the the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. There are also three other family plaque safety feature inclusions. Uh, forward collision alert warns you if you're getting too close to the car in front. Automatic high beam assist dips your headlights for you at night. And driver attention alert monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. Small SUVs can't be as efficient as the super minis they're based on. Uh, extra weight and bluffer aerodynamics put paid to that. Uh, this C3 Aircross is no exception to that rule either. In terms of weight, it tips the scales at around 100 kilos more than an ordinary C3. That exacts a penalty of about 10% on the fuel and CO2 emissions figures you can expect. And that's a premium that we expect most potential owners will be quite happy to pay in return for the extra fashionability of uh, running the car of this kind. It is worth pointing out, though, that the inherent lightness of the standard C3 means that this SUV version's extra weight doesn't leave it as being a particularly heavy car. A quick perusal of this little Aircross model's various curb weights uh, left us concluding that it didn't actually weigh much more than something like, say, an ordinary Vauxhall Corsa Super Mini. All of which pays off when it comes to the actual figures. Uh, the base 82 BHP normally aspirated 1.2 litre PureTech petrol unit achieves 55.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 116 grams per kilometre of CO2. If you stretch up to the turbocharged 110 bhp 1.2 litre PureTech petrol power plant that we would recommend, you get an engine stop start system, uh, which means that the quoted returns for that variant are hardly any different to those of the normally aspirated model. So you can expect 56.5 mpg and 115 grams per kilometre, or 50.4 mpg and 126 grams per kilometre if you opt for that unit with the optional E86 automatic gearbox. Stretch to the pokiest PureTech 130 manual variant that we're trying here, and the figures are 53.3 miles per gallon, 119 grams per kilometer. Predictably, this car's diesel figures also look good. Um, expect 70.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 104 grams per kilometre uh, from the blue HDI 100 variant and 68.9 mpg and 107 grams per kilometre if you go for the blue HDI 120 model. Now that's not class leading, but it's certainly right up there. Uh, both diesel engines also come with the stop and start system fitted as standard, and every C3 Aircross in the range has a gear efficiency indicator to tell the driver which is the best cog to be in to use the least fuel. Keep an eye on this and drive with frugality as a priority, and you should be able to eke out an impressive range from the 45 litre fuel tank, around 600 miles from a PureTech petrol model, and up to 800 miles from one of the diesels. 
So how have the PSA Group engineers been able to achieve such a strong efficiency showing uh, with the engines across the range? Well, with the PureTech petrol units, the answer lies in reduced weight and a 30% reduction in mechanical losses due to friction. If you switch your attention to Citroen's Blue HDI diesel technology, well, the answer there lies in a clever three-step after-treatment system that's designed to better eliminate the four nasty pollutants that diesel units use put out so namely those are uh, unbound hydrocarbons carbon monoxide uh, nitrogen oxides and particulates so the first stage that sees the unwanted hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide elements converted into harmless water and carbon dioxide in the second stage, that nasty nitrogen oxide also gets converted into water via a selective catalytic reduction process using a urea and water mixture, which is called AdBlue, although you will need to get that mixture uh, topped up every 12,500 miles. And finally, in the third step, a particulate emissions filter eliminates virtually all particulates at a stroke. Enough on engine efficiency, what about other financial considerations? Well, uh, regular service intervals come around every 16,000 miles or every 12 months, depending on which comes sooner. Uh, now, for many owners, that will mean a visit to the dealer once a year, and there are plenty of Citroen outlets to choose from, so you should never be too far from one. So you can budget ahead. The French maker offers its Citroen maintenance scheme that lets you pay either a one-off fee or monthly instalments to cover the cost of the routine upkeep of your car for as long as three years and 35,000 miles. Every C3 Aircross comes with a three-year and 60,000-mile warranty. Uh, the first two years aren't uh, subject to any mileage limits, but the third year, which is taken care of by your local dealer, is limited to 60,000 miles. There's also Europe-wide breakdown assistance included from new for the first year you own the car. Uh, looking at the longer term, you'll also have a 12-year guarantee against rust and 36 months cover for any paintwork defects, although that doesn't include stone chips or other wear and tear damage. On to insurance, where the groupings are very class competitive. The entry-level 1.2-litre PureTech petrol model with 82 bhp attracts a Group 6E rating. A move up to the 110 bhp PureTech turbo petrol variant and your car will be rated at Group 13E. Uh, this PureTech 130 derivative is rated at Group 16E. Uh, for those wanting the diesel engines, the less powerful Blue HDI 100 model is rated at Group 15E and the Blue HDI 120 derivative is a group 18e and lastly whether you're leasing the c3 aircross or buying it outright with your own hard-earned cash uh, you're going to want to know what it's going to be worth when you come to move it on now that means looking at residual values and that's an area where this model really does perform much better than you might expect independent experts cap reckon that after the usual industry standard three-year 30,000 mile ownership period your c3 aircross will be worth between 41.9 and 46.9 percent of its original asking price depending on the variant that you select. After a three-year 60,000 mile ownership period, it will be worth between 36 and 39.4% of its original value. And that's a very strong result for Citroen. If the automotive market was sensible and rational, this would be a small MPV, as in many ways it is, uh, just one with an SUV mindset. Now we like that combination and there's no reason why potential buyers shouldn't too. A C3 Aircross might not be especially fun to drive, but few B-segment SUVs are. What matters is that it's fun to look at and fun to sit in, which ought to make it fun to own too. Yet at the same time, this model's pretty much as practical as a C3 Picasso small people carrier that it replaced. Its two other main attributes are distinctly Citroen ones, an impressive standard of ride for this class of car, and affordability which could easily see you in a C3 Aircross at a four-figure sum saving over comparable versions of key class rivals. Other issues? Yes, a few, but uh, they're not really deal breakers. Some of the cabin fixtures and fittings don't feel quite as sturdy as we'd like them to be, and the brand's insistence on incorporating the uh, ventilation controls into menus on the infotainment screen is less than ideal too. Otherwise, though, there's actually a lot to like here. 
When it all comes down to it, this is an appealing, distinctive and nicely equipped little SUV. Unlike most cars in this class, it actually feels better on the road than the Super Mini it's based on. And it offers an awful lot more than the ordinary C3 in return for the reasonable premium being asked. Um, it's Citroen's idea of what a small crossover of this kind should be. And that makes it a little different from your other choices in this class which might mean that you'll end up liking this car a lot more than you thought you were going to. Well, we did.